Hello folks and welcome to today's quick tip tutorial where I'm going to be covering off some of the fundamentals of the new masking features inside of Lightroom. So over on the left hand side of our screen here you can see that we've got the old layout of Lightroom and you can see here just above basic we've got your crop tool, your spot hitting brush tool, the red eye reduction tool and then you've got your three masking tools or primary masking tools right here. One is called the linear gradient, one is called the radial gradient, and the other is called the brush tool right over here. Now those have somewhat changed inside of the new Lightroom. And now you've got your crop tool, obviously here. You've got your spot hitting brush tool there. Uh, you've got your red eye reduction tool here. And suddenly those three little options have disappeared. And I think that's what's thrown a couple of people out, including myself. Now, all of your masking tools are found underneath this option over here. Let me just actually increase the size of Lightroom here. I'll go back to that little icon. It says masking. You can also press Shift plus W on your keyboard. So let me just click this and open up those options. Now you can see all of our masking options inside of Lightroom. Now there's two new added masking options right here. One is called Select Subject. The other is called select, uh, select Sky. And then, of course, you've got your traditional masking options over here, which are Brush, Linear Gradient, and, of course, the Radial Gradient right here. And then underneath it, you've got Color Range, or Select Your Mask via Color Range, or Selecting a Mask Based on Luminance Range. Now, in this case, in this particular image over here, this little biker boy, uh, this is actually a tutorial which is inside of our membership at the moment. What I want to do is I want to make some changes to the background elements of, of, our, of our image here. Now you can see that we don't obviously have a way to select a background on its own. What we need to do in this case is actually select our main subject in our scene. So what we're going to do is click once on select subject. Now you can see instantly we've got this little fly out mask window over here. And you can see clearly that our subject has been selected in our image and that's shown by the red overlay mask that we've got here you can keep that on or off i like to keep it on so i can have a visual reference as to what's being selected and what's not being selected now obviously in this case here our subject is still selected but we still can't work with our background now there's a very easy way to get around that and what we need to do is go to where it says subject one click on the three little bars over here okay and then you're going to see a little drop down menu and you need to select invert okay so press on invert and you'll see now that our background changed to red and our subject is being left alone that just means that our background is selected and not our subject and you can make those changes however you want okay if i reduce the exposure here it really makes our subject pop out from our background so that's one use of of the masking options here now let me just reset that to zero obviously when we zoom in you can see that our mask isn't perfect so what we need to do is work on the mask itself now what i need to do here is add to that background mask because i want to add this little area over here into that okay so i'll click on add I will scroll down to where it says brush see brush over here click on brush and now you see all of those familiar little brush tool options okay what i want you to do is make sure that auto mask is selected okay i'm going to start painting in this little area over here and i can obviously use my bracket keys on my keyboard to adjust the size of my brush now we've got a nice little selection of that inner part and adding that to the background. Now, when we scroll around the image, you can see that our mask is still not quite perfect. We've got these little areas over here where the red of the or the red mask is actually bleeding into his hair here. We need to subtract that away from our mask. Okay, so we need to go over to subtract, go to the brush tool, and now again just resize our brush and come in and just make sure that none of our background element is or our background selection is overlapping into our subject so i'm essentially just tidying up the mask nicely over here you can see here on the fabric you can see that red from the background bleeding through that just means that the mask wasn't quite 
accurate in those areas. So I'm just going up here and cleaning up my mask as easy as that. Coming over to the handlebars here. You can see that I've overlapped there a little bit, okay? All we need to do if you overlap like that into the background, go to the erase button here. Just make sure that auto mask is still active and then just go in there and tidy up that mask like so, all right? Now we switch away from erase back to the A button here and it goes back to our normal brush tool. And we are now just removing those handlebar portions away from the background elements, okay? So I'm essentially just tidying up the mask by making sure that it's not overlapping into my subject in any way, shape or form, okay? This is not gonna be 100% accurate, but I just want you guys to get the gist of the masking tools inside of Lightroom, okay? Now, these tools are identical when you open them up inside of, of Photoshop and you go to your camera raw filter, okay? You're gonna have the same process. Okay, and just come over to these little bolts on our wheels here. Like I said, it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but I wanna just get a basic selection of my subject away from the background. So there you have it, folks. Okay, so when I zoom out, again, we can obviously come in and make those fine tune adjustments over here. And for the demonstration purposes of this tutorial, let's come in and select, select texture over here. Blah, I've got a bit tongue twisted there. Go over to clarity remove the clarity and we'll go for dehaze. Now, we've got an issue here, haven't we? We're actually affecting the entire image and we're not actually uh, really zoning into a particular area. For this particular image, I wanna just be editing some of my background elements round about here, just behind my subject, okay? So what we need to do here, let me just reset all of these settings over here, just bring them all back to zero. So just coming in here very quickly. What I wanna do here is actually add a gradient filter, okay? Now you're gonna tell me, well, we've already got all these masks, how am I gonna do that? So it's a very simple solution here too. Go over to where it says mask one, click on the three little dots here, and then you say intersect mask with a linear gradient, okay? So I'm gonna click on linear gradient right here. And what I'm going to do is now drag my linear gradient all the way across the back end of my subject. And you'll see, ta-da, our subject isn't being selected, just the portion, or this upper portion of my image is being selected as part of the mask, okay? So now I could come in and I can brighten up and you can see that only the top end of my image is being affected and it's gradually fading out into the foreground over here. So that means I can come into features like texture and clarity and really reduce the clarity of the background here. You can see that now we're softening things out over here. I could, for example, go for a creative look here and make my background look misty by going in and adjusting the dehaze filter, okay? Now I'm moving the dehaze filter over to my left-hand side here and it looks like we've got mist in our background. How about that, okay? Now the good thing about that that gradient or linear gradient is that you can move it around to your heart's content. I could shorten the fall off of that gradient. I can move the gradient down, I can move the whole group of the gradient down like that and get a very accurate endpoint for where my mist is meant to be in this shot. Okay, I can move it up or I can get it to fade out a lot more at the bottom here. Of course, you can come back here and you can reduce your dehaze filter a little bit here. So it doesn't look too unnatural, okay? So it just looks like we've got this mistiness in our background. <laughs> that was just a little creative offspin of doing this process. Now I could, for example, come in and actually adjust the saturation of the background. <gasps> look at that. In fact, <laughs> here at minus 30, that looks pretty awesome because now I've muted some of those yellow tones in the background and we've got these little hints of gray, which kind of work well here because it ties in with the little outfit our guy is wearing over here. And if you guys follow my tutorials, you'll know that I love to simplify my color palette and that's exactly what's happened here. I further simplified my color palette. So now we've got 
these hints of yellow, which almost look like skin tones, which match in with the skin tones of my subject. And you can see that there's these hints of these colors over here, these yellows in the road. And then of course you've got the gray elements creeping in here, which kind of really tie in very well with the outfit of the boy. So there you have it folks, you know, just a couple of sliders, adding in those different brush tools have really created a different feel to this image by just using masking options here inside of Lightroom. Now, all of these options that you see here are available inside of Photoshop, but all you need to do inside of Photoshop is open up your camera raw filter and then go in and you've got the exact same options of of playing around with masks. So folks, thank you very much for joining in to today's quick tip tutorial, and we'll see you in the next session. Ciao for now.